Good afternoon, Mr. Masito, and thank you so much for making time for our summit, particularly this celebration for women entrepreneurs in 2020 in South Africa. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, or good day. I'm good. I'm good. I'm very good. I'm alive and well. What more can I ask for? Listen, in 2020, what more can we really ask for? We are happy to be alive and healthy and in good spirit. Um, thank you so much for investing your time, your expertise, and everything that we are about to hear from you today. Um, and really welcome to our third annual Bio Summit in partnership with Women Entrepreneurship Day organization. I, for my sins, am grateful to be heading this ambassadorship in South Africa for women in business. And um, this time on the 20th of November is going to be our South African celebration. However, it is the 19th of November that has been declared the Women Entrepreneurship Day globally. We are celebrating in 144 countries and um, we are very excited about this um, celebration and summit. And uh, we've got a lot of questions, obviously, to you. We look forward to learn from big business. We look forward to be equipped to ride the new wave, the new normal, and be um, better businesswomen and really grow our businesses to be big business as well. Everything has changed. And, and as you obviously know, you are in the tech space, everything has changed, particularly um, with our theme being evolving is the only way to thrive. I'm interested to know about evolving careers and obviously evolving workplace and work dynamics during this time. Um, and if, as everything changed, we started working at home remotely. How did this play out for Google Africa um, and just dynamics in your team as such? Um, yes, definitely. Uh, we needed to evolve immediately and we needed to adapt immediately. As Darwin once said, it is the survival of the most adaptable, not the fittest. So <laughs> we had to adapt and I think it helps when you have helpful and useful tools already yeah. that used by millions of people in the world. So in our when COVID hit, with, by February, we've been working from home. Wow. So when we started working from home in March or April, we've already been working from home. And because we also have the tools such as um, Hangouts or video conferencing and making sure that every employee has access to the right device, access to the right economics, where the company ensured that every employee gets to be able to have a proper chair, have a proper stand-in desk if you need a stand-in desk. And then the most important part actually for the company, either than just technology tools, has been well-being. Because yeah. the most important part that has actually affected most people, including Google employees as well be, especially yeah. if you are a parent with kids or mm -hmm. a caregiver, or you have your parents who are elderly staying with you. The company even allowed people to take carers leave so that they can be able to take care of their loved ones and not wow. even worry or stress about work. So, and also we put a lot of emphasis on well-being initiatives even making sure that employees are now aware that the employee assistant program exists because there will be more anxiety, there will be more depression, or there will be more mental um, illnesses that will occur as a result of us not being able to socially um, connect because we are social creatures by nature. And now if we are connected from people that we might feel lonely, or alone, or even lonely, and all of that. So I would say for me, as much as the emphasis on moving from working from home has been around how the useful and helpful Google technologies, including like Google Classroom or G Suite, the cloud solutions, and including Gmail, which now people value even more <laughs> ever before because it has been useful, even including things like cloud as in google cloud or google photos where people now even go on google photos and relive 
the things that they have done before COVID. Mm. And that also has been very useful. So, but it has also helped us in that we have put a lot of emphasis again on making sure that people have accurate information. There's a lot of accurate information, whether it be on search or YouTube. Yeah. And we make sure that if you Google anything around COVID and you Google anything around knowing about the vaccine or about the virus or about how to stay safe, that there's facts and from credible and reliable sources. So that is something that has been beneficial, even partnering with government in many of the case. So I would say when I look at how we've evolved one, we have been in a fortunate position that already we have these Google products and services that are helpful and useful that our employees have been using, which now we've also extended to other people and other users. For example, Hangout has now been free for the first year of COVID to most people so that they can be able to do video conferencing properly. And also some of the things that like G, G Suite or G Classroom, which is needed by private schools or public schools, that also has been made available to public schools and private schools. So it's, for me, it's first the technology, making sure that we had the right technology. The second part is the part that I would probably say soft part, which is well-being and how much effort and energy we put in well-being and also, lastly, I would say COVID has really disproportionately affected women or underrepresented group, poor people, or excluded communities, LGBTQ communities. So how do we become part of the solution in making sure that you relieve even the, the employees at Google who are women or who are caregivers, how do you make sure that you help them and reduce the tension or the potential frustration of having to juggle many things while working from home. So I must say the evolving has been good, but we're still learning like everyone else. Um, it's, there's no template. So that means we are in a complex, complicated situation. And yeah. so we, we make mistakes, then we correct we apologize or we evolve, we learn from others, we collaborate with others as well because we can't do it on our own. So you have to learn from others as well, partners and agencies and other, even including your competitors in terms yeah. of how you're handling working from home. So I must say it's, it has required the whole village oh. to evolve. To evolve. I love that. I mean, you, you've given us quite a lot. I love particularly towards the end um, that you are speaking of um, being open to learn because this didn't come with a book um, that even big business is saying we haven't arrived. We're still trying to figure it out and we are allowing ourselves the space for error, errors and really then quickly resolve and, and ask from others as well how they are handling it. And that's something we can adopt as women in business, as women entrepreneurs. You touched a little bit about um, just juggling I mean, I became a teacher immediately um, on lockdown. I ran my business and yet my children were home and I had to share um, my entire dining table because I don't have a study at home. It was just in impressive to read articles that Google has set up or assisting employees to have proper working space, sitting position, so that you don't add on strain on your back because you just don't have a working environment that is suitable and comfortable as you did at work. I mean, that was just incredible. Um, and one thing that I learned, um, obviously budgets allowing that, you know, I should be thinking about something like that to ensure my team is just as comfortable. Leading up to the fourth industrial revolution, we heard a lot about careers are going to evolve and they're continuously evolving. And 2020 accelerated some of the careers and from your perspective and from your insights and what you see um, as Google Africa, what are those career opportunities that have already arrived that, that we thought they would probably be in five years time or 10 years time and we can still study and take our time about them to, to be competent in those new careers. And as women in workplace, um, this is the hat I'm wearing now. 
what are these careers that we should be opening our eyes to that have really been accelerated by this time? What the first thing I might say, even someone who's been an, a practitioner and academic. So when I speak to students, I say to them, the only thing now they need to accept, including people in business or women in business, is that there's now a clear convergence between art and science and the psychic and the physical. And so what it then means is that we must embrace both and worship both, the science and the art. However, there are certain fundamental evergreen skills or competencies, whether we're moving through artificial intelligence or quantum computing or big data, they are still required. For example, storytelling. Yeah. We, we human beings tell stories better than the machine does. And so if you're in business, you still need to learn how to tell stories. And you need to learn to tell stories well, because you still, whether you're gonna say it virtually, whether you're gonna say it in, in audio, yeah. whether you're gonna say it via podcast, whether you're gonna say it via video, whether you're gonna say it via text or blog or an email or a book, you're still telling stories. The only thing that changes is the platform you're using, or you could use all of them, including social media platforms. So storytelling doesn't go away. Actually, now we're gonna even have to be better at telling stories and how to be more precise, how to get to the point, how to also win the head and the heart of a human being that is now on the other side of the screen, which you can't sense as you would have been able to if you were sitting on the table or having lunch or having dinner with this potential client. So the first thing, it doesn't go away, it's storytelling. Whether it's in written form, whether it's in auditory form, whether it's in visual form. So this skill is something that I would say that even a woman in business, it's something that we all have to practice. And if you're not good at it, you just have to invest more time practicing how to be a good storyteller. The second part as well is, of course, what's embedded in storytelling is writing. That skill doesn't go away as well, because we just need to learn to write well. And now we're gonna even have to learn to write even more better because now people are gonna be flooded with more emails because we're all working from home. They're gonna have more text messages, more working from home. How do you use audio? on your phone instead of text and send messages via audio. But how do you make sure that audio is easy to comprehend, makes sense, delivers the message, you can clinch the deal. So that's storytelling. And that hasn't, AI is not gonna be able to tell that at this point better than a human being can. The second one is around creativity. We're still gonna have to be creative in coming up with solutions on how we serve the, the, the consumer, how we serve the client at a profit. So creativity is not gonna go anywhere. There's not enough computers yet, or even quantum mechanics or computers who can be as creative as we are. So that means creativity is something that we need to make sure our right brain, not just our left brain, is really working. And we need to learn more how to think creatively and so that is also something that is not going anywhere as a skill. The third thing, for those people who are in arts, let's say you major a degree in arts and you think that there is no uh, future for you. Amazingly, actually, I recently I've been talking to um, engineers who deal with voice assistant or language. We are in need of linguists who can teach the machine to talk, who can teach the machine to speak English in a South African way, not an English in a British way. Then <laughs> the other area that most people don't realize is mother tongue content creation is still at its infancy. Most of our kids are learning in English and most of our online content is in predominantly, whether it be voice or visual or text is in English, but now there's a new trend where everyone is getting more conscious that actually mother tongue matters, yeah. vernacular matters, your child will improve their comprehension 
their understanding of concepts if they also learn in mother tongue. But yeah. then it means there's an opportunity for women entrepreneurs to invest because now content is the new oil. But actually mother tongue content is actually even a greater oil if mm. you can find it better. So those are some of just the top three things I would say that these ones are actually things that we intuitively already know. Fortunately, I even think women do it better than men, sure. but yeah. it's just people are not seeing it as something you can go in business and monetize. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible. I mean, um, I was expecting, you know, really defined career structures and right what you've given us is the essence and the underlying common threads of whatever we are then evolving to um, will forever and for our lifetime require this um, intrinsic skill of being able to tell stories um, and you can learn it. It's not like you're, you're born with it. You can be better at it. And, um, and I love that it is also about just getting back to the basics of mother tongue to enable the a better development um, of the new generation from where we sit here. And as nurturers, as, I mean, women are nurturers. They're adaptive beings more than men as you say we sit in a better position to leverage this and evolve it into the technical platforms for the benefit of the whole world you've just reminded me something that i mean in at google now we have two tools that even yeah. women can use like yeah. we know that coding is gonna be it's it's it is the language that our kids and even and it doesn't have an age. Coding, like all languages, you don't have to be at a certain age to learn a language. You can learn the language at any age. So there's no such thing as I'm too old to learn a language. Coding is just a language. I mean, we at Google launched an app called Grasshopper. And Grasshopper, as it's an app you can download on Android. It's free. And you can learn to code. Yeah. And you can learn it as a new skill. If you want to improve your skill in STEM or technology or communication, then you learn to code. Or instead of only giving your child a Barbie doll, which there's nothing wrong with a Barbie doll, but can you complement it with a Barbie that can code? And that you give your child also coding a grasshopper. And then for parents, for example, who want their kids to improve reading skills, because that's something that is also still important, even yeah. With changing times, reading still matters. And now we launch another app called Read Along. And Read Along is actually has a built-in voice assistant where it helps the child improve their reading. So let's say you're a busy mom, working entrepreneur, but you still want your child to have fall in love with reading. And now you're just juggling lots of things which most mothers or women have to do. Then you can also use the power of technology to complement and ease your schedule and maybe then download these apps for your kids so that instead of they only do things that are not always developmental, yeah. but then you also help them with coding. You also help them with reading literacy. And then if you're a parent that is worried about uh, privacy and security, you can go now on search yeah. and go on search safe search and just google safe search and you can activate safe search which will help make sure that your child does not have access to pornography or does not have access to information that you don't want your child to have access to or if you've got a device with enough memory you can even download an app called family link and family link what family link does it helps the mother in this case the parent to be able to manage, monitor their child's digital footprint. It also helps the mother be able to set um, a framework and boundaries for their child of things that they're not gonna do. And it can even monitor, but also it even has a, a locator. Like you wanna know where your child is. Because you have built in location in it, you can also even know where your child is and track your child to improve your child's safety when they are not near you. So there are tools and technology tools that are available now as we speak that yeah. I believe that um, uh, women in business or working moms who are stretched 
and who need to use the power of technology to ease that pressure, such tools exist. And maybe what I will do as well, Nox, is I'll send you a slide that maybe they can just share, which will just show what are some of the now tools that you yeah. can yeah. use that will help improve your productivity as a working mother or as a woman in business or both, those who are hustling doing both. <laughs> Fantastic, Zamo. Thank you so much. I, I just, I can't thank you enough, especially um, when it comes to my son is constantly on his phone, right? Or an iPad. It's Minecraft, Minecraft, Minecraft. And I say, put that down and grab a book. But if I can get the reading, um, you know, also developing while still on the device, that's even more brilliant because he's just, he won't let go of the phone or the, the iPad. You're going to have to have like sad faces. But this is valuable for me because then he's able to improve his reading skills also using the device, the tech devices that are available. Incredible with children going to university. I think I've got my daughter's the same age as yours. You want to know exactly that they're in the right space without really be spying as such um, and have people following her everywhere when they're supposed to be free and, and enjoying university. So great tools um, as a woman in business who travels and often is probably not at home to really know that they are well and within the devices that they're using and not exposed to things I wouldn't want them to be exposed to. So thank you for that. Another element of, of wellness, I guess, in terms of relieving that stress as a parent. I was gonna talk about the wellness at work and you already had spoken about it. And I wanna speak about the energy dynamics and managing um, what you have often referred to technology without human um, element does not give us great ideas and innovation. But at the same time, I'm thinking technology and human element about advancing our careers and really building relationship, client relations. I mean, when we were working at Unilever, it was easy to manage up, manage across. You could call for that quick meeting um, and really engage with your sponsor um, and feel each other's energy and get to understand each other where you're at. Diaries are full of Zoom meetings. How do we now um, manage our career relationships for that promotion, for that um, powerful voice that can speak on my behalf um, in places that I'm not in, in the boardroom? How do I now manage this if I'm a woman in a workplace and also manage client relationships when we are working online and we are not meeting in person? If you could just give us a few tips and how do we manage this um, as women in the workplace and in business? I, I like the use, you use the, the word like I, for underrepresented groups. Mm -hmm. Then it gets worse if you're a woman. It even gets worse, by the way, if there's intersectionality that you yeah. add LGBTQ, you add with disability. So you can be a woman, LGBTQ, with a disability, it gets even worse. So, yeah. so the, all of those intersectionalities, the one thing that I've learned that if you are from an underrepresented group, there is no way you're going to go up without the three key people. One, the sponsor, the second being the coach, the third being the mentor. But as an underrepresented group, it was not explained to me clearly that the three are different and they don't do the same job. So the first thing we need to be doing is first defining what is a sponsor versus a mentor versus the coach. The way I understand it and I've come to understand it is that the sponsor is someone who speaks about you and they speak for you and they open doors for you. That's what a sponsor is. So if yeah. you go up the corporate ladder, even in business, you own your own. The first question you should also be asking, do I have a sponsor? Do I have someone? They don't have to be quantity. It has to be quality. But do I have someone who can speak for me? Yeah. Who can vouch for me? who can speak about me and who, can, who has power and influence. That's they right. have power and influence. So that's the sport. The second part is you want to have a coach. Yeah. But the coach is someone who speaks with you. They speak with you. They meet you where you are. They, they are a lot more uh, therapist in nature in that they will ask you, 
did you think about this? Did you think about that? They, they will be a lot more patient. They will take the time. They will ask you, the, they might not even give you the answers. They will give you the right questions so that you can get the right answer. Yeah. But then a mentor is someone who speaks to you. They speak to you. They are not there to coach you. They are there because they've done this before. And if you have good ears and you can understand and you listen, they will tell you how to shortcut the situation. They will tell you, don't, don't do it this way, do it this way, because if you go that way, it's just not gonna work. And there are certain things where you just need a mentor to say, who will speak to you and say, don't be an idiot, do it this way. <laughs> and, and if you do it this way, you're gonna succeed. So I think it starts there for me, Knox, in that you have to be clear if you wanna go up, that do I have these three people Sometimes you get lucky. You have that one person who's all three. Oh, but it's, yeah. rare. it's rare though to have one person who's all three. And also you are overloading that person too much to be expecting them to be your sponsor, to be your mentor, to be your coach. Even your mm -hmm. parents can't do that. Your own, those who still have parents, they can't mm -hmm. do it. They can either coach or mentor, but yeah. they rate the sponsor. True. So, so that's the first part. Now, in terms of COVID, the other thing that we're learning is that if you want to manage your well-being very well, then you're going to have to focus on impact and quality, not quantity. Busy does not equal progress. So you can't because now you're working from home, you want to prove to your boss that you are busy. That's not going to work. You need to prove that you are making an impact. And therefore... You, anyway, anyone who works from home, there's enough evidence to prove that you don't work at 100% capacity productivity yeah. versus yeah. when you work at the office. So you're working at 80% already. So if you are working at 80%, then you need to adjust your quantity of work and rather prioritize and have fewer things that you're doing that will deliver more impact. That's another thing then is it's just impact. Then yeah. the third thing, you're gonna have to be a lot more deliberate, intentional and proactive about setting structures. When do you speak to your mentor? When do you speak to your coach? When do you speak? So you're gonna, it can be now, oh no, when we bump to each other, it's not gonna work anymore. So now you need to be a lot more structured. You're gonna have to put structure in place and you're gonna now have to honor and respect that structure and not now change, reschedule, cancel meetings, because then you're gonna irritate the person on the other side because they have to invest time, their valuable work yeah. from home time and giving it to you. And then the last piece for me then I, I would say is that more and more when I, when I, I listen to, um, because I've been in a business for 23, four years now where 80% of the people report to me are women, actually 90% in marketing, yeah. market research. The other thing, the last two things then become about be very clear how you score on goals. Mm. Because we don't want to talk about this, that if you black, how are you making things worse for yourself? You are black already. So you, how do you not make things worse? Because they are going to be worse. Because the fact that you are a minority or underrepresented, you are going to be stereotyped. You are going to be discriminated. You are going to be excluded by the, those who are privileged or the privileged majority. So that is not in your control. But you do have things that are within your control. For example, if I'm black, why am I late? I know already there's a stereotype around me that blacks are late. So why are you late then? Why are you not honoring and respecting the meeting? Why are you not honoring the, and respecting the client? Those are just own goals. That's nothing to do with gender or race. It's yeah. just own goals, which we need to stop doing. Then the other part is like own goals that I believe that sometimes women, in this case, I'll talk about women in, 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 in the workplace. They will also be scoring. For example, when I'm with my team, 
and I, I, there's two things that I've observed as a guy, which guys don't do much. Maybe they should learn to do a little bit of them. One, women are over apologize. Oh, <laughs> over apologize, everything, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, so everything, you say something, you add sorry. It, uh, it's, it's just, all it does, it just dilutes what you're saying. Why do you need to apologize mm. so much? Have you ever had men who, con who thumbs up with conviction, apologizing for thumbs sucking with conviction? Men don't do that, but I find like in a lot of the meetings that I'm in, like you'll find that women over apologize. There's nothing wrong with being humble and apologize, but this over apologizing needs to stop. The second one I've noticed as a guy as well is that you'll be in a meeting, the first person to volunteer to make tea or take minutes is a woman. Not this day, not on this day, not it's now. And so, and now as an ally and someone who has three daughters and who wants to improve gender equality. Now my job as an ally is to be able to say, hey, why are you making tea? You have a, yeah. you didn't go oh. to school to have a PhD or to own your own business and now you're offering to make tea because perception oh. matters. The, the bunch of those men who are sitting there, they immediately view you as their helper, as their secretary, uh, less than, and now you are not in the same level as them when actually you could be even more competent than them. Hmm. The third thing that also women in the workplace do more than men do is women under self-promote and they under self-evaluate. So if you give women a performance rating and you ask them to evaluate themselves, there's enough scientific evidence to show that women under self-evaluate they will give themselves a lower score. Hmm. And, and I think it's partly the maternal intelligence of knowing that you have room for growth. Unfortunately, yeah. corporations are full of masculine intelligence. And the masculine intelligence always thinks it's ready when it's not even ready. It's, it's only men who will apply for a job when they are 30% ready. Women, <laughs> women wait until they are 120% ready to yeah. apply. It's also a mistake that women under self-value themselves more than men who are incompetent, not ready, overvalue themselves yeah. when they are even not ready. So sure. now what should be also happening is there should be enough more awareness. For example, at Google now, there's a program called, which even the woman in this, program can go to it's called hashtag I'm remarkable hashtag I'm remarkable is a program that teaches women to self-promote and it's a program that helps women not to under self-evaluate and those are some of the skills that women will also need whether you run your own business whether you are working in the workplace the own goals you need to reduce them sure. so that you are only confronting toxic patriarchy toxic masculinity, those are not in your control. But what is in your control is some of the things that are just your own goals because you, we also need to improve self-awareness. Whether you're black or you're a person with a disability, LGBTQ or woman, some of these things we also need to work harder on. So I would say these are the kind of things that I'm now seeing as things that we need to do. I love it, Mzamo, because what you've done, you've brought the importance of soft skills and hard skills into advancing in business and in the workplace. And particularly, we need to just be unapologetically, our, you know, ourselves, own ourselves, and really boldly take up the space as opposed to somebody is doing me a favor for being here. Um, I love that there's a level of the this, this things that we can control and things that we can drive to ensure that we speak out you know, with conviction, we own our capabilities. We also just toot our horn a little bit. It's okay to promote yourself and, and really say, I am remarkable. I love that and I'm going to look out for it and share it in the Bloom Inside Out community because we are all about advancing women. I was gonna say in wrapping, um, and I wanna go more into the hard skills um, in business growth strategies, you've shared a lot of tools, you've shared a lot of insights, 
now I am maybe want to just maybe one or two strategies for women to ride this new normal wave better and be boss about it. Um, what would you share with us when it comes to business growth strategies we can adopt for this period? So there are still evergreen like business growth solutions. One of them is no one buys your product. Everyone's buying a solution. Mm. You need to improve the solution. Sure. Great solutions sell easier. That doesn't change. That whether you that's why I'm yeah. always saying to people, never sell anything on your demography. Don't mm. sell it because you're black. Yeah, Don't ask people. us to buy it because you're black. Don't mm. ask us to buy it because you're a woman or LGBTQ or you're a person with a disability. No one buys stuff because mostly it's your demography. No one buys uh, uh, Beats by Dre because he's black. Mm -hmm. They buy it because it gives them something. No one buys Laduma Makosa or Makosa Africa because he's black. First, they buy it because the product and the solution is great. So this doesn't go away. And this is a hard skill that all of us needs to learn. Let's stop putting the triple BE up front as like it's the magic wand that we need. No, it's just so happened to be the thing that we can complement our great solution with. But it can't be the thing we put in front. What we put in front is a great solution. This doesn't change. It's gonna be with us probably till eternity that people don't buy product and services. They buy solutions. So the question is every person, whether you work in, in the corporate, you're employed, or you have your own business, the answer you should be give, asking is, do I, am I offering great solutions? Am I offering a great product, which is a great solution? Yeah. And then the second piece is behavioral science and is here to stay. Why and how people make decisions mm. is important. So what we need also then with women in business or women in corporate is immerse yourself in understanding behavioral science. Immerse yourself, there's enough books that people can read. I, I can even send you another slide on, here are the top 10 books on behavioral science that are all about why people do the things they do. And if we yeah. don't understand that, if we don't understand, for example, something as simple as most people in marketing, we were taught that you need loyalty but it must be monogamous loyalty. But now we know science and behavioral science that human beings have monogamous loyalty. There's no, they, they don't have monogamous loyalty, they have polygam polygamous or polyamorous yeah. loyalty. Yeah. People have in one category, a repertoire of three, and minimum choose of four mm. to mm. choose from. So our yeah. job as running businesses or as a market chair in an organization is, your job is to be top of mind and to be top on the person's consideration list. They must consider you ahead of other people. So that is not going away, it's gonna be with us. Then the third piece, which is kind of just hardcore for me is that visibility matters. Yeah. Your service needs to be visible. You need to be visible the service needs to be visible because if you're not visible, there's something in behavioral science called repetition suppression. Repetition suppression basically means that the brain loves energy conservation. It doesn't spend time on things that it doesn't see or it doesn't remember. So it is your job and mine as running a business or working in the workplace to refresh people's memory structures that you exist and why you exist and what you're good at. That's why then you need to invest in whether paid advertising or owned media advertising, your own platforms. But if yeah. you don't do it, you are not going to have visibility. Then the last one for me, which has come up a lot, like in most cases when it comes to women, whether it be in corporate or women in business, is that there tends to be a view that women must only do HR or marketing. There's one core skill, the PNL. 
and the budget and the cash flow statement. These three things and maths or just counting, <laughs> just knowing how to count. This is a fundamental skill that I have never been in any boardroom where they don't discuss the PL, they okay. don't discuss the balance sheet, they don't discuss the cash flow, they don't use words like PE ratio, discounted cash flow, they, yeah. they don't use ROI, all of these things. I would love to see more women just because women actually do better than men in meds. So yeah. actually, this is an area women will pick up easier than men. Even in primary school, in high school, there's enough data that shows that women in South Africa are doing better than men. Yeah. Girls are doing better than boys. The it's only right. area that is a challenge, there's a huge gap where women are not investing in is STEM. When it comes to science, technology, mathematics, counting, numeracy, women tend to be shying away from those disciplines. But unfortunately, where the future is going, everyone needs to fall in love with those numbers. It's everyone needs to fall in love with statistics or mathematics or accounting, finance. And you don't even need to be a guru per se, but you need to have enough basic appreciation yeah. or working knowledge on yeah. those numbers and don't abdicate that responsibility to someone else even if you have an accountant who works with you or for you yeah. it's still something that I remember once listening to Oprah she said even though she's a billionaire she still signs her own checks she signs the ten dollar check with more smile more than the one million dollar check because what I learned from her is that if you are not focusing on your PL and your you're going to lose your business, even if you have a great solution. Mm. And even if you're great at selling, great at storytelling, great at problem solving, and great at visibility yeah. and refreshing memory structures. But if you don't get the basics right on the hardcore numbers skill, then still someone else will end up buying your business cheap. Sure. Thank you for helping us master our businesses, master our careers. Um, I love that you took us from right at the top all the way to the bottom line in numbers. And it's not just about the soft skills, it's both the soft skills and the hard skills in Zamo. I cannot thank you enough. You've truly shown that the he for she um, drive is alive in South Africa. Thank you for investing your time. As they say, if you want to invest in the future, You've got to invest in women and uh, the future is female and that future is now. Can't thank you enough for this time. Um, safe travels and we will carry on with our summit and uh, hope to be really surfing this new normal the best way we can as boss ladies from 2021 and um, going forward. I'll look out for those tools from Google. I'll look out for the reading material and, and, and books that we can engage in terms of understanding um, human dynamics and, and then make better choices as women in business going forward. I thank you. Thank you very much. My last, my last parting, parting words is that please get your business online. Businesses that are online grow faster than businesses that are only offline. Mm -hmm. And if you can't afford a webmaster or web developer, you don't even have to worry with that. You can even go and search. There's a tool Google called Business Profile on Google. Some people yeah. used to do it as Google My Business. And you can go in, create your profile, make sure your business is verified and listed. Make yeah. sure that if we Google your business on search, we can find it because it's verified and listed. Make sure if you Google your business on maps, we can find your business and we know what your opening times are. We can call you. We can rate you. We can even give feedback on your service. So it is very important that I am really encouraging black, particularly women who own businesses to get their businesses online. And if you're, if you, if you're new in it, you don't have a website, you don't even have to worry about that too. Because in the business profile on Google or Google My Business, there's a free website tool. You can even create a website there for you it yeah. will help you create that website. And on top of it, you can even buy a, a South Africa domain now, which is much cheaper 
and you can use that your know your domain in Google My Business as well. So it's just there are a lot of things that we can do now to grow our businesses, but we have to fall in love with going online. We cannot love, know- it, love it, love it. Get onto technology, hop on the train of 4IR, get our business online, get the digital footprint and, and existence and visibility. And uh, I cannot stress it enough. Um, I can't thank you enough as well, Mzamo. We appreciate what you've done in investing in women. Um, in driving 21st century businesses that are not just growing, but they are sustainable and they can be there for generations to come. Thank you, thank you, thank you.